So hello and welcome back. Welcome to the last part of our lecture series on Monte Carlo localization or implementing Bayes filters by using particle filters for localization. So in this lecture, we have introduced Monte Carlo localization. We've described how you can use MCL for local and global localization and how MCL represents a posterior belief by using particles and how these random particles can also enable MCL to solve the kidnapped robot problem. Once again, the content from this course comes from the text Probabilistic Robotics and also content on the website probabilisticrobotics.org where the text is written by Sebastian Thrun, Wolfram Burgard, as well as Dieter Fox. If you want to know more about their work, please go check out their website. Let's get started. So we ended our last lecture by talking a little bit about resampling, which is essentially when we add weights to our particles based upon our sensor input in order to find samples that are more likely to be where the robot state is. So given a set of weighted samples, we want a random sample where the probability of drawing X is given by weight I. So this is typically done in times with replacement to generate our new sample set that is more closely um, a reflection of the probability of where the robot's located. So resampling or important sampling means drawing with replacement in particles from a temporary set. And then the probability of drawing a particle is given by its importance weight. Then the resampling transforms a particle set of in particles into another particle set of the same size. But now because we are incorporating weights into this second set using the resampling process, the distribution of the particles change where we saw in the previous lecture, they're not uniform anymore, but they're now clustered around places where the robot is more likely to be or have its state, the posterior belief. It's called survival of the fittest. And it refocuses the particle set to regions in state space with a higher posterior probability. So it focuses the computational resources of the filter algorithm to regions in the state space where they matter the most. So assume we have n particles and know that all have a different importance as shown by this Roulet wheel here. So you're using normalization. So all particles will sum to one based upon their weights. So you arrange them in this wheel where the size of the bin is proportional to the importance wheel. So now if you now spin the wheel and select a angle, or if this is like the ball on the roulette wheel and you put that on there, the bigger bins represent a bigger importance weight. So it's a higher likelihood that you are now going to land in one of those locations. So you now want to use some type of search and you could even use a binary search to make it more likely that you're going to select one of those bins that has a higher importance weight. And by doing this, what you will see here is what resampling does is it now has this mean and this variance that correlates to the weight of all these particles where they're now distributed based upon this figure. So here's your roulette wheel with your binary search in log n where you're more likely to converge on the, the localization or the probability of being in a state that's actually where the robot's located. Where over here, you have this stochastic universal sampling and a systematic resampling or it's linear time is complexity is linear time complex. So it's easy to implement and it has a lower variance. So these are two different ways in order to do the same resampling technique. So here is what the resampling algorithm looks like for stochastic universal sampling. So once again, you are going to iterate through all of your states for I equals two to N and then you find C, and then you're gonna initialize some threshold. And then based upon that threshold, you're gonna draw upon the samples and determine whether they are at that threshold or not. And if they are not, then you're going to skip them until that threshold is reached. And if they are at that threshold, then you're going to include them into your new sample state. And then you increment the threshold again. And then at the end, you're going to return your systematic resample data based upon that stochastic universal sampling. So once again, here's the motion model that we had before. And now what we do in MCL is we call this our prediction step. So this is as the robot's moving, how does it predict where it is? 
And remember these um, red particles now represent the more likely location. So obviously the more the robot moves, the more spread out they become because there is motion uh, model error as well as maybe even possible sensor error, like for example, using an encoder. So then the next step is called the correction step where you now are gonna either use laser or sonar data in order to determine where the robot is, where you have measured data represented by the blue line, approximate data represented by the red line, and you use this to inform the data that you have from the motion model. And then after the correction step, we know we do our resampling step where we now use that weighted, um, where we now weight the particles based upon importance, based upon the posterior belief about the robot's pose given the sensor data. So each particle is a potential pose of the robot. The set of weighted particles approximates the posterior belief about the robot's pose. Then the particles are drawn from the motion model, which we call our proposal distribution or prediction step. Then the particles are weighted according to the observation model, which we call our sensor model. And then our particles are resampled according to those particle weights again in order to localize. So recall that resampling is important because we only have a finite number of particles. And we could have an infinite number if we're going to approximate a continuous time function, but we won't be able to do that with a robot. So without resampling, this filter is going to likely lose track of a good hypothesis if you don't have some way of weighting the particles in, for, in order for it to converge on a good solution. So we use resampling in order to do this to make sure that particles stay in a meaningful area of the state space. And then we use the survival of the fittest as our hypothesis or those clusters in order to find out where the robot is. So here's another example where we have global localization and at the beginning we have a sample of random hypotheses. This is actually a museum and the robot's gonna use a laser range finder to localize in this museum where initially it has 10,000 samples un uniformly distributed, it has no idea where it is. Then what happens next is we now take our first observation or laser reading and then the particles start are going to show the highest likelihood of where the robot is given that laser reading. This is called our prediction model and it replicates this location more often after it passes through our motion model. So the robot is somewhere around here most likely. And so now if we resample, we go back to our uniform data. But now when we sense the data again and use our weighted importance, we now are starting to get clustering of the most likely locations of the robot. So now we're getting some clusters here, we're getting some clusters over here in the corner where the robot actually was. And so now when it gets its next observation, you weigh your particles and you should see that they're starting to cluster and get darker in that upper corner of the museum. And when you resample with your 10,000 hypothesis, all these other clusters are starting to disappear and they're starting to converge up here. And now we have a prediction hypothesis that the robot is most likely somewhere around here as it's moving. And we take the sensor data and what you should notice is that the sensor data is starting to align a little bit closer now to actual objects in the world of where the robot is. And so now we would say that the robot has localized in that location. So the prediction will always spread out a little bit and you notice that it's starting to do that because it's using that convolution and when you do the convolution, the convolution causes it to spread out or smooth out like that. So at this point, we would say that the robot knows where it is and has localized, the other particles are now gone. But you could also resample one more time in order to continue to localize the robot's location as it moves as shown here and you take another sensor reading. And the kidnapped robot should be able to recover from failure because just like we have here, if you use this uniform distribution of particles, even if you pick the robot up and move it, since it starts from that point, as it iterates through its steps and as it moves and as it resamples and it does the weighting and all of that, it should be able to converge. So here's a video of what the, of this looks like. So the robot's moving around, 
And if you pick up and move the robot, it should be able to localize itself by using the particles. And notice that sometimes it has to completely start over and it's in multiple locations, but then it will eventually recover from that failure and relocalize itself again. Okay, so the robot's now localized, but at some point along here, it's going to get lost or kidnapped. And so then it starts a uniform distribution where the particles all showed up again, but then it's going to reconverge and iterate through that process. So here's another one based upon ultrasound scans. And once again, it starts off with a uniform distribution. And then after 10 ultrasound scans, here is where it's starting to do the clustering based upon the importance weighting. Then here's after 65 ultrasound scans, you could say the robot is most likely here and all the other clusters have now disappeared. Where here is a path that the robot took and here's the start location and then here's the robot driving around, around and then at some point it's going to get to here, which is where it localized. So here's another mobile robot localization example based upon the figure I showed before where the robot is moving and then it's going to get into that local maxima and then it's going to enter into the room and completely localize. So there are some limitations to this approach as described so far. It is able to track the a mobile robot and to globally localize the robot. And it can deal with localization errors as we've shown here by randomly inserting samples. The robot can be teleported at any point in time. And then when you inject that noise, it starts over and it starts to relocalize by going through these steps again. So it's proportional to the average likelihood of the particles. The robot can be teleported with a higher probability when the likelihood of its observations drops off and it can correct from those errors. So remember, mobile robot localization with respect to Monte Carlo localization, each particle is a potential pose of the robot. The proposal distribution is a motion model of the robot, which we call the prediction step. The observation model is used to compute the importance or weight of the correction step and it's used for that clustering and that's how the robot localizes. So in summary, particle filters are an implementation of recursive Bayesian filtering. They represent the posterior belief by a set of weighted samples. In the context of localization, the particles are propagated, propagated according to the motion model of the robot, and then they are weighted according to the likelihood of that observation being true based upon the robot's state. And then in the resampling step, new particles are drawn with a pro probability proportional to the likelihood of the observation. It is possible to model arbitrarily and thus there's no need for a, a non-Gaussian distributions and you can use a proposal to draw new samples. Weights are computed to account for the difference between the proposal and the target and histograms and particle filters are examples of non-parametric Bayes filters. Non-parametric filters approximate the posterior belief by a finite number of values like histogram bands or particles. And you can use these assumptions on a system model and the shape of the posterior. So the approximation error converges uniformly to zero as the number of values used to represent the posterior goes to infinity. And this concludes lecture 6-1 on particle filters, Monte Carlo filter. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've learned a lot, I hope you've watched and please come back to me and come back to the global